Welcome to Ojibra Academy's YouTube channel. In our previous video, we explained into details photosynthesis and we're able to only explain the light reaction stage, everything that goes on in the light reaction, starting from the absorption of light down to the photolysis of water, the transfer of electron, the electron acceptor involved in the process and the products that will eventually produce in the light, in the light reaction stage. I also said everything that um, happened in the light reaction, it occurred in the thylakoid membrane of the chloroplast because the thylakoid has the ability to absorb light rays. So at the end of the light reaction, we're able to produce, we have two products. We have two products. Number one product is NADPH. And the second product is ATP. Remember that we've not used our CO2. So we have three things now. We have our carbon four oxide, that has not been used. We have the ATP that was generated from the light reaction and we have NADPH that was also generated from the light reaction. Remember that the CO2 enters the leaf through the pores called stomata and it diffuses into the stroma of the chloroplast which is the site of carbon cycle or you can call it a dark reaction, or you call it the light independent reaction. Now, everything that goes on here in the dark reaction, we call it dark reaction because they are not directly driven by light. So we call it dark reaction, or you can call it Calvin cycle because of the name of the scientist that, they, that discovered the cycle is Calvin. So everything that goes on here, it occurs in the stroma, the stroma. Now, the carving cycle, it involves three stages. Stage number one, we call it carbon fixation. Carbon fixation. Why the second stage involves carbon reduction? Why the third stage involves carbon regeneration? Carbon regeneration. Now, let's take it one after the other. The first stage where we have carbon fixation. The carbon fixation step, as the name, as the name implies, it means we want to fix carbon with something. In the stroma, we already have a five carbon sugar present in the stroma, which is ribulose one five by four sweet. But we can just write it as RUBP because of space. This RUBP means ribulose one five by four sweet. Ribulose. Ribulose one five by four sweet. That is your RUBP. So we'll fix RUBP with our carbon four oxide. So the first thing that we'll make use of in the dark reaction is CO2. This plus CO2, we generate a six carbon compound a six carbon compound, but the six carbon compound is unstable. So it automatically splits into two to give three carbon compound each, which you call three phosphoglycerate. We have three phosphoglycerate here, PGA. We have another three phosphoglycerate. Each phosphoglycerate contains three carbon. So this contains three carbon. This also contains three carbon. Together, they have six carbon. So it shows that the six carbon produced here 
splitted into two of three phosphoglycerate. It means on the carbon three of this particular compound, we have a phosphate group. And the same thing happens to this. This reaction occurs in the presence of an enzyme called Rubisco. So the reaction, the first reaction, which is carbon fixation, it occurs in the presence of an enzyme called Rubisco. Rubisco means ribulose 1, 5 by phosphate carboxylic oxygenase. Ribulose 1, 5 by phosphate carboxylase oxygenase. Let me just write it here. Ribulose 1,5 by phosphate carboxylase carboxylase oxygenase. So this enzyme implies that we want to fuse carbon and oxygen with ribulose so as to generate a six carbon compound that's splitted into two because this six carbon compound is unstable so it has to split into two the first one is 3 pga the second one is also 3 pga pga means phosphoglycerate phosphoglycerate and the same thing for the other one too now that is what happens in the first stage which is carbon fixation and as a matter of fact Rubisco is the most abundant enzyme on earth because the number of plants that undergoes uh, photosynthesis they are much more than other living things. So it goes on and goes on until life season in those plants. So the number of Rubisco being used every time is more than the number of any other enzyme being utilized. So Rubisco is therefore the most abundant enzyme on earth. Now the second stage now we have carbon reduction. As the name implies carbon reduction. What goes on here is that we want to use ATP and NADPH in this stage to reduce carbon. ATP and NADPH to reduce carbon. And the carbon we are reducing are the carbon from these two compounds. So we can just write it as, picking it together, two molecules of 3PGA. Two molecules of 3 PGA plus we have to phosphorylate this compound first before we reduce it with NADPH. ATP contains three phosphate group. We will make use of one phosphate group and the two returns back to the light reaction. So this plus ATP now will give us now. Here I want you to please take note. We already have one phosphate group on this compound. So we are adding another one to heat. So we're going to have two phosphate group in the product. So the product will be one three by phosphoglycerate because this is already phosphog three phosphoglycerate. We now have another phosphate group being added to it. So now be one three by phosphoglycerate. The compound produces one three by phosphoglycerate by phosphoglycerate so it shows that we have two phosphate group on the compound so we have one three by phospho glycerate that is the name of the compound produced now we have already phosphorylated this the next thing is to get it reduced so this one three by phosphoglycerate plus nadph now nadph the name of this particular step, which is carbon reduction, it gets its name from this particular step, which is NADPH plus this. We are reducing this compound with the hydrogen present on this cool enzyme. So it is NADPH plus 1,3 by phosphoglycerate to eventually give us 3 glycerate aldehyde 3 phosphate. That's the product. Glycerate aldehyde 3 phosphate which we short as G3P, glyceraldehyde, glyceraldehyde 3, phosphate, glyceraldehyde 3, phosphate. And this compound is a 3-carbon compound. Now, in carbon regeneration, which is the last step, 
in carbon regeneration. Some molecules of G3P, this particular G3P, some molecules of G3P goes to make glucose. Why other must be recycled to regenerate RUBP? This is a cycle. We call it Calvin cycle. Calvin cycle. It's a cycle. So anything we use at the beginning must be returned back. So in the stroma, we make use of RUBP. So we must return it back to where we took it from. So that anytime this process needs to take place, RUBP will always be present. So from this G3P, we must regenerate back our RUBP. And this process requires ATP as well. So in the next video, we're going to bring out a summary or a cycle which involves all these reactions and it will summarize everything in just a cycle to actually explain the number of CO2 that will come in, the number of ATP and NADPH utilized and the number of G3P regenerated. Then from there, we we'll know the number of G3P that will form RUBP back and the remaining that will form glucose. Don't forget to like, comment and share. And most importantly, subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much as you come to the end of this lecture.